All right. Um, like I said, I don't really have any trigger warnings for this talk. Uh, there may be some brief mentions of misgendering. I think it's at a minimum. Uh, other than that, we're going to have a great time. <laughs> uh, so uh, how many of you are familiar with the term non-binary? Let's start there. This is a great room to be in because <laughs> normally I don't get that many hands. <laughs> um, so I am from Indianapolis. I am a Twitch streamer and a, uh, a general creative, still figuring my, uh, my way out in life. Uh, and I'm non-binary. And uh, I, f I use they, them pronouns. Uh, I figured this out about a year and a half ago, and I've been running with it since. Uh, and so I want to talk a little bit about games and how that relates to a non-binary identity. Uh, particularly because games have been so important in kind of figuring myself out. And I think that that's a, a very common narrative among other non-binary people. Uh, because digital spaces have that flexibility to let you be whoever you want to be, uh, be yourself, um, or experiment with what that self might look like. Um, so like I said, Twitch streamer. Um, I also worked on a small mobile game called Hibachi Hero. I like to bring that up. Uh, it, it gives me a feeling of validity as a game person <laughs> uh, who hasn't been doing a lot of game things lately. Um, so now that we've kind of covered what non-binary is uh, from my perspective, I guess we'll go into a couple definitions. So first of all, uh, this game's going to focus a lot on RPGs. So what is an RPG? Most of you know it's a, a role-playing game. And specifically, I'm going to focus on kind of two sides of this conversation. Um, so games where you're, you're playing as yourself. There's a character creation. You're not playing as uh, someone who already has a backstory within that world. Uh, examples being Stardew Valley, Pokemon Go, The Sims, and many, many more. Uh, and then others, which are similar but not quite the same, would be a self-insert character where they have some backstory, but you're still encouraged to put some of yourself into that character. Uh, so Frisk in Undertale, Link in Legend of Zelda, etc., etc. You're uh, your main hero, essentially. Um, and so then we're going to talk about what qualifies as non-binary representation, um, particularly because I don't want this talk to be a how do you check off that representation box when you're making your game, uh, and how do you how do you do it right? Um, so representation, good representation, would be something that allows the player to uh, to explore, allows them to. Uh, try out different options and really has that variety um, because when we say gender sure we've got you know broad categories of male and female and agender and and non-binary but even within that there is a fluidity there is a spectrum um, and so having that variety and a way to express that variety um, is a good start uh, and then also having characters besides your main player character who also have that variety, that nuance, is part of what makes it a good game. So what I want to do for this talk uh, is go over a couple of my favorite games that did things pretty well uh, and talk about what went really well and what could have gone better with some of those games uh, and then kind of give you a brief uh, best practices. Uh, so I want to start off with one of my favorite games. If you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. Uh, Read Only Memories. Um, some of the devs are here. Say hi to them afterwards because they're nice. <laughs> uh, Read Only Memories is a cyberpunk mystery RPG that came out within the last year uh, multiple times. <laughs> and uh, contains several characters in the, uh, in the queer spectrum. Um, but particularly has good non-binary representation. And I, I start with this one because this was the game that I was playing when I was first kind of figuring my, my own gender out, and so I'm very fond of it. 
uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, the first being that your character, um, you, you choose your own name. Uh, they also, and I've never had a game do this really, ask your pronouns. Um, it's, it's a text-based game, so it has some of the flexibility to do that. Um, and, it, and it has a lot of, I, I guess you would say, standard options. You've got your, your she, her, he, him, they, them. Um, but also let you type in your own. And at the time, uh, I hadn't settled on they, them. I was, I was exploring neo-pronouns. And this was the first game that I, I really got to do that and see what did it look like for other people to refer to me with these words. How did I feel about it? And it felt great. <laughs> and uh, I'd never had a game give me that freedom to, to say, maybe this is who I am. And uh, I think that really is amazing to have a game that, that gives you that level of freedom and to let you explore and say, maybe this is who I am, maybe it's not. Because you can always reset a game and say, okay, this time I'm going to try this. And it's such a small thing, but it really matters for a lot of people. Um, then within the game, uh, there, are, there are two uh, characters who are non-binary. Um, one is, is Tomcat. You meet them in a, uh, in a bar. They're uh, a hacker. And it, it's never really brought up, but they're referred to with they pronouns. And um, uh, they're one of my favorite characters. Um, and then also... Uh, this lovely robot here, Turing, uh, has a conversation that you can have with them in the game. Uh, they're, they're essentially uh, newly born uh, and still figuring themselves out as well. And they have this conversation with you that they, they're still thinking about their pronouns. And they, they worry that people tend to refer to them as a he because they're blue. <laughs> and uh, they think they would prefer they. Um, and I liked that it was, it was an honest conversation that I could relate to very strongly at the time. Um, some of the things that maybe could have gone smoother would be that you give, you give Turing your, your pronouns during this character selection scene in the game, and, and then it's never mentioned again. Uh, there's, there's no awkward introducing your pronouns to someone when you meet them for the first time, which doesn't really mesh with reality. But um, in some ways, that's a nice thing to be able to step into a game and just say, these are my pronouns. I don't have to have this awkward conversation. You can just assume because you're a computer. <laughs> um, and so I, I haven't fully uh, grokked what the better solution would be uh, to... How do you add awkwardness back into a game? Because uh, I, I like games that are awkward. <laughs> um, but I, I definitely put it at the top of my list of, uh, especially for text-based games, how do you make a game where you can be yourself? Um, the next game I want to talk about is Stardew Valley. I've been playing it a lot recently. Um, and one of the things that I like about it is that all of the style options are available regardless of if you choose uh, what they call a male or a female avatar. Um, the only difference between the avatars is that they have a set of pronouns attached to them and the male uh, character is one pixel taller. <laughs> um, the thing that's really interesting uh, about this game is that not only are all of the style options unlocked at the beginning and you can, you can choose a female avatar and give them a beard or, or vice versa, um, you can change that at any point in the game once you've made a certain friendship level with a wizard. Uh, <laughs> the wizard will allow you to change your gender expression at any time, once per day. <laughs> Some exclusions apply. Um, and I think that was, I, I like games that don't lock you into one specific way of being um, and allows for that gender fluidity. Um, 
So now that we've kind of talked about character creation, um, I do want to talk about Undertale very briefly. Um, one of the reasons I bring up Undertale is that the main character, Frisk, uh, who you can name however you'd like, uh, is ambiguously gendered. Uh, they're only ever referred to as kid, nah, never he or she, uh, which is another way of, uh, of dealing with awkward pronouns uh, and has led to this lovely cartoon that I will share with you. I'll give you <laughs> a moment. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and the really great thing about Frisk is, is that they just get to be, and they, they are more than just whatever gender you assign to them as you're playing, and it allows you to be Frisk, regardless of how you identify. Um, and most of these are really recent games, so I want to go to something a little bit older that um, I really like. Uh, so Mother 3, which was uh, released in Japan, it, it never had an official English translation, uh, has these wonderful uh, characters that you meet throughout the game. They're called the May Gypsies, uh, and they are humanoid aliens uh, who are neither male nor female, uh, as stated in the game's text. Uh, they have feminine names, they have more feminine clothing choices, gender expression, but masculine bodies. Um, and I love, one, this is an older game um, by standards of uh, inclusivity. Um, but one thing that I really like about these characters is that they don't put a focus on the idea of passing. Uh, which we don't often see in games. If you if you have uh, a transgender character in games, typically they they are a stereotype, uh, and these characters um, kind of go outside of that. And I they they definitely miss the mark in certain spots. Um, I would say that they're less non-binary and more a stereotype of gay culture uh, in their outfits, at least. Um, but they, they bring up both a good and a bad point in these characters. Because um, one of the things I like is that they're not human. They're aliens. And it's a wonderful idea to think, of course, aliens don't have the same idea of gender as we do because gender is a cultural thing. But at the same time, if you say, oh, the only characters in this game that are non-binary are aliens, are non-binary people alien. Uh, and so it's, it's a catch, it's, there's a trouble there. Um, and it comes down to, is this your only form of representation in your game? Uh, so say for example, this was a Mass Effect game and all of your characters were binary except for one group of aliens. That would be problematic, saying only non-binary people are aliens. They're, they're not human, they're not uh, acceptable. Uh, but if you had an alien race that tended to be non-binary and also had human characters that were non-binary as well, that would be a better form of representation, in my mind. Uh, so. Moving on from that, uh, a favorite recent game, uh, Pokemon Go, which the, uh, the craze has passed since I last gave this presentation. <laughs> um, did a really interesting thing similar to Stardew Valley, where there are style options instead of set gender options. Uh, and you can change it at any time. Um, and additionally, uh, one of the team's leaders uh, has a very androgynous appearance and hasn't been given set pronouns from what I know. That may have changed since Laura's come out. Um, and I know we're running a little late, so I'm going to zip through these. <laughs> uh, 
Um, the Sims 4, again, no longer gender locking their clothing and their body types and their voices. It's, it's open to whatever you'd like. Um, and again, can be changed at any time, although I believe you have to uh, use one of the in-game cheats to unlock this option. So not quite perfect, but getting there. Um, so now that I've given you a couple options and examples, uh, kind of bringing it back, why does it matter? Um, and I think this is kind of an obvious thing for a lot of people here. Um, you're here because you care about representation and that sort of thing. Um, but games are a medium that is fluid enough for this kind of expression in a way that other mediums can't. You don't have self-insert characters in movies. You may have them in books to a degree. Um, but games do something really special and allow people to step outside of who they feel like they have to be and allow them to find out who they are. Um, so a couple takeaways and best practices. Um, avoid token characters. So kind of the problems that Mother 3 was running into. Don't fall onto stereotypes. Make real people. Uh, if they seem like the sort of person that you would meet on the bus and you'd talk to them or um, things like that. Um, if, you, if you only know about a type of person through a stereotype, maybe that's not the right character for you to be making unless you do more research. Um, avoid gender-locked items, um, particularly because it makes it easier for you. <laughs> Uh, the more options that you allow players to access on either side, the less you have to make more clothing options if you can access the full catalog instead of just half, uh, which is good. Uh, avoid enforcing the binary. That's the whole point of this talk. <laughs> um, at the time I was doing this talk, uh, it was more focused on LGBT uh, representation. Um, so that's an old bullet point, but... Really, this talk is about don't enforce the binary, because that makes me sad. <laughs> uh, avoid permanent appearance decisions. Uh, allow for fluidity. Um, as someone who also identifies as gender fluid, I appreciate it, and so will your players. Um, some do's. Do include well-rounded characters. Uh, if their only reason for being in your game is to be the checkbox, that's bad. Uh, if they're there and they exist for other reasons and they have wants and needs in a backstory, that's good because your players will remember that. Um, universal style options is the opposite to gender locked items. Um, if you can, use a neutral day before, you, uh, before your player decides what they're going to be. Uh, for example, at the start of Skyrim, when you're making your character and their default is a he, what are you saying there? <laughs> uh, instead, maybe don't show a character until you select uh, a he or a she to start with, or if you have a slider that allows for um, starting somewhere in the middle. Uh, and it just generally leave room for experimentation. Games are, are a playground and a fun place to figure out who you are and be someone that you want to be, uh, whether that's being yourself or, or just being someone else for a little while. So thank you, and questions, and follow me on Twitter if you would like. <laughs> yeah.